Hi, my name is Thomas Whitaker. Uh, this is my presentation on how sound is important in the education. So I'm going to start by listening to some music for you. So we've got Full Loop, which is uh, quite like sound effects, but it's kind of like this uh, reproduced in like a studio. It's something that you would probably like notice too well, but if it wasn't there, you would kind of notice it being moved around as well. Uh, ambience, also something too well, it's just like background noise, it's always going on everywhere, like buzzing from like computers and stuff. ADR, it's like a voice replacement in like a studio, just to get a clean sound, which is better because it's like more isolated and stuff. Like when you're recording like someone talking, it, like they're actually like short rather than background noise and stuff that might not want to. Um, sound effects. Shots, explosions, that kind of thing. Uh, if it wasn't there, you, you would notice it. Kind of. And dialogue and mono. So dialogue, just two people talking to each other. Monologue, uh, could be like a narrator or could be someone just talking to themselves. Do it quite well, like Shakespeare, Rumi, in the Greek and stuff. Uh, the music. So, the first reason why sound is important is immersion. Immerses you in the movie, like immersion, be mentally involved in something. If you don't have the immersion in the movie, you might feel a bit lost, you might even start like going to sleep, you might not recommend it to friends. I watched the movie, it, and I wasn't immersed enough, kind of thing, saying bad things about it. So, like, people might not want to watch it because of what I kind of said about it. So, Create immersion, you can use ambience. So, ambience, there's always sounds going on, like I just kind of said. Uh, it can also be used to characterize the environment. And what I mean by that is, like, make the audience know where you are and, like, make sure it like, links up with, the, like, with everything. And, like, I'll show the video. They can't be tracked down at Times Square to pick up the merchandise. They don't have some kind of uh, middle man. Uh, this is good ambience. It's quite loud. It's there's lots of cars. Uh, you can hear kind of mumble like people talking, waving their hands and stuff. And it shows you're in a big city, and it lines up with visual big city. So, fun how Foley creates immersion. So Foley, it quite keeps keeps things like quite interesting. A lot of sounds. Like when you open a door or something, it might not make a sound. But in a movie, if it does, it kind of keeps you still in the movie, keeps you interested. Um, however, if it is done badly, it can just it can be like too loud or something. It might take your focus off of what the director wants you to look at. So I'll show you a bad. So that's the game Roblox. It's not the most immersive of games. It's a game really technically, but the example is that it's just the same sound looping over and over again, and that you, you kind of twig onto that, and it like really immersive you. So sound effects, uh, quite useful in games, with like left and right stuff, like, like pro gamers like put on the headset and listen left or right to see, like listening on where like the enemy is. Sound effects you wouldn't really be able to do that. If you use the wrong way, it can like also make you laugh with this example here. It's quite goofy. It's a sound effect that you like have, it's a stock sound effect, so I don't know, it makes me laugh a bit. Uh, and also, another sound effect where it's kind of ruined is Terminator 3. <laughs> Future war scene. The first two movies, Terminator 1, Terminator 2, they did it very well. It was dark, it was scary. Uh, and I read online that 
a lot of people didn't like the future war scenes from Terminator 3, so I looked them up and it's quite lucky with the sound. It's the lasers are a bit just a bit goofy sounding basically. So ADR, dialogue, monologue are three things handled together. People talking in the movie run to take you out of the immersion, whether it's by casting for a voice actor. Um, like if the voice doesn't suit the character, you will like twig on, it'll be a bit weird. Uh, and also lip syncing as well, that takes you out of the immersion immediately, makes you realize the language is really weird. Because you're just like, you know, getting into the mind having that kind of conversation. May I help you? You must be Leonard, the manager. I'm your new brand as representative. So the voice and the visual are just like not at all. So the next thing is perspective. Basically, the director can make you feel whatever you want about a movie, and it's quite a powerful tool. Like the director's got the job because they are good at like envisioning things, and if they can make the audience feel exactly how they envision it, then the audience will probably enjoy it. So music makes you perceive uh, it makes you perceive something the way the director wants you to. So that could be uh, you know, this example here. So it's quite calm. It's just uh, basically just shower, shower noises. That's quite calm. And then suddenly it's loud music, loud light dialogue. And then I totally changes and there's someone revving something. And if that music wasn't there, I think that scene might look a bit funny to me. I don't know. That's just me. Also, music can show the audience change, start changing like a character or something. Uh, if it's like you know, changing the genre or like the tempo or key, just like the audience can kind of like keep up with what's going on, but like in a subtle way. Also, juxtaposition is a good way of using music. So, it's like the director can make you feel anything you want. So, I'll show you this scene and I'll basically. Okay, John, it's time to the So, it's got an energetic song and it's happy, but without the music, it's. Really assaulting an old man, basically. Uh, but yeah, it's all about the perspective. It's, yeah. So, ADR, dialogue, monologue, um, people have different voices, it's human to get an idea of how they sound. So, that's an assault on like, the voice language too, whether it's good for a murder or whatever. So, yeah, casting, basically. Um, if the character doesn't sound director will make you want to see it. Um, an example of this, like basically the Terminator. Terminator sounds exactly like how you manage, imagine the Terminator sound. However, Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't voice a German version of himself because his accent was too goofy. He had quite a, like, a country accent in when he was actually speaking German. So sound effects, good for comedy movies and stuff. Keeps like comedy movies sometimes like you know like kids and stuff that, that keeps the kids interested and stuff uh, so yeah. now without the sound it's quite a boring scene but it makes it the sound makes a boring scene interesting and that that keeps you know interested basically so my last kind of thing is popularity. That movies have sounds that are linked to them very recognizable. So yeah, James Bond films, uh, they each one of them's like got a song to them. Uh, you, you don't really hear the song. Well you hear songs a lot, you can hear them on the radio and stuff. Uh, whereas like you don't watch movies every day, so you'll hear music every day, that piece of music. Could be like linked to a movie, might make you want to watch the movie. Uh, so, light motifs, recurring themes throughout a musical or literary composition associated with a particular person, idea, or situation. Basically, just someone's theme. I'll show that with the Darth Vader theme. <laughs> That's 
that's a theme that like 99% of people know. And it's come kind of like a pop culture thing if you don't know it. Like, you know, it might not be in the conversation or something. Uh, so yeah, that's basically why sound is important in 